Today is the second Sunday after Advent. What went you out into the desert to see? A reed shaken with the wind. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today I would like to give more of a spiritual conference, a spiritual talk on the virtue of fortitude. Now, first of all, fortitude is a moral virtue. This is a definition according to theologians. A virtue that moderates the passions and gives the courage to endure or attack evil in the pursuit of good. A more simple definition would be this. It is a readiness to encounter the greatest of evils rather than to turn aside from the path of duty. Or just to give you a phrase to describe fortitude, it is this, to do what you must, come what may. Do your duty, no matter what evil may follow. That is fortitude. That is true fortitude. And to give you an example of this, we are told today to think about two saints. The one whose feast it is today, St. Ambrose, and the other one was mentioned in the Gospel of, the, of today's Mass, St. John the Baptist. Both of them, if you read their lives, had great supernatural fortitude. They did their duty. They even corrected kings and princes despite the fact that they knew they could be punished very severely. They did what they had to do no matter what would have followed. St. Ambrose, for instance, lived in the 300s. He was born in about the year 340. So it was around the time of the, the Christian persecutions. And anything at that time could have sparked a fresh persecution. If you said just the wrong thing to the wrong person, well, then there would be another bloody persecution. But St. Ambrose, on one occasion, had to correct the emperor himself, something that the officials were doing badly. He went to the emperor and gave him a severe reprimand. But thankfully... The Emperor Valentinian was grateful for this correction and accepted it very well. On another occasion, he told the Emperor Theodosius, who sat down in the sanctuary during the Mass. Remember, in those days, it was allowed. The Emperor, I guess, could sit in the sanctuary for Mass. Um, and a lot of times in the past, you've seen the, uh, in France, the kings were always allowed to sit in the sanctuary. But St. Ambrose didn't like that. And he told the Emperor Theodosius quite bluntly, he said, My Lord, it is lawful for none but the sacred ministers to remain in the sanctuary. Be pleased, therefore, to go out and stand with the rest. The purple robe makes princes. It does not make priests. He told him very bluntly, leave the sanctuary. And uh, he did what he had to do. He did not fear anything that the Emperor would have to tell him. St. John the Baptist was the same. You know the, the story of how he was martyred. Um, he had to correct the King Herod for his, for his adultery, and it ended up in the death of St. John the Baptist. That took a great amount of fortitude. And then, too, you see the fortitude in his spiritual life. St. John the Baptist lived in the desert. He wore the hair shirt, which was uh, a shirt made of animal's hair, and the, the hair is very scratchy and very itchy, very penitential garment. And he lived on locusts and honey. All of that, to do all of that, took a great amount of supernatural fortitude. Now, fortitude has two functions, right? Two functions. One is active, one is passive, you might say. Uh, the active function of fortitude helps us to attack evil, and the passive one helps us to endure evil, to endure all difficulties. And let us take, for instance, the soldiers in, in the World War I or World War II, or the soldiers in any war, as a matter of fact. It took a great amount of fortitude to do their duties, to attack. When, when the soldiers would come in their tanks or in their guns and make a surprise attack, it takes a great amount of courage. But it takes a greater amount of courage to be in the trenches where you were surprised. You are the one being attacked. And your general says, don't attack. As they said, one of the generals said in the uh, American Revolution, don't fire until you see the white of their eyes. 
It takes a great amount of fortitude to endure attack and not be able to do anything about it, but sit and wait until it goes away. And so it is also in the spiritual life. We need active and passive fortitude. Time and time again, remember, we read in sacred scripture that life is a warfare. Thus we need fortitude. Um, Fortitude is the support of all the virtues. Without this virtue of fortitude, none of the other virtues will ever last. And ultimately, without fortitude, we certainly can never get to heaven. The reason for that is because, think of it, when temptation comes, temptation is an attack. You must endure it. You must also fight it. And without fortitude, you will not be able to resist the attacks of the enemy, the devil, or temptation. You just could not do it. So we must have fortitude. Now how do we recognize fortitude? I just will ask you a few questions for you to ask yourselves sometime today or during this period of Advent. And these are the ways of recognizing fortitude in your spiritual lives. First of all, ask yourself, do I mortify my passions strongly? That is, when the temptation to anger wells up inside of me and I feel like a a volcano about to erupt on somebody, do I fight it or do I give vent to it? Do I have to vent? Do I have to tell everybody how I'm feeling or show my anger or punch a wall or something like that? Or do I endure it? I accept this temptation, but I do not consent to it. I pray for the grace to overcome it. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, Make my heart like to thine. Or when the passion of fear comes up, do you fight it? Or do you sit there and and worry like somebody who does not trust in God? Or when sadness comes, everything seems to be against you. Sadness too is a passion. And we must fight it. We cannot become depressed. We need fortitude to mortify that passion of sadness and lust and bitterness, all of the other temptations, we must fight with fortitude. Secondly, do I patiently endure difficulties for my neighbor's sake? The missionaries, think of all the missionaries in the past. Father de Smet, the apostle of the the Rocky Mountains, or the Jesuit martyrs of North America, uh, St. Isaac Jogues, or any of those wonderful missionary saints. They suffered great hardships for love of their neighbor's soul. They suffered labor, um, hunger, and thirst. St. John de Berbeuf said he almost couldn't breathe in the the tents, the homes of the Indians, because the smell of the, the wet dogs, the stench of the Indians who didn't bathe very much, and uh, all of the other things that take place in those huts of the Indians. He endured all of that for love of neighbor. Now, can we not go out of our way a little bit to to help our neighbor, to to help him in any way, spiritually or materially, and endure a little bit of difficulty in our own life? Thirdly, do I patiently endure unexpected trials? We all can, if we foresee a trial, we can deal with it a little better. Or if we give ourselves a voluntary mortification, it's easy to handle. But can we accept the unexpected trials that come to us in daily life that God will send us from time to time? Do we endure it with patience? What if God sends you a trial? Can you endure it? Whether it be this trial be death, or whether it be bad weather, or whether it be the fact that you lose something unexpectedly, you have a toothache or some person comes to you and and really and truly just plain annoys you. All of those things can happen all of a sudden. You're not expecting them. Can you deal with them with patience? Those are some of the ways of recognizing fortitude. Now briefly as well, I want to say the vices that are opposed to fortitude, and then the virtues which stem from it. The vices are boldness, that is, an overconfidence, and cowardice, which can be shown in the fear of suffering, 
the neglect of fraternal correction when we're obliged to do so, we're afraid to offend somebody, the failure to struggle against temptation and passions. Those are all signs of cowardice which is opposed to fortitude. And the virtues of, of fortitude are four. There are four of them. The first is magnanimity. And you see this in all of the saints' lives. Magnanimity is a readiness of soul to do great things for God. So when you see these saints who did great, great penances, it was a special grace from God, but it also showed their great amount of magnanimity of soul. The second is magnificence. That, that is a virtue. It is the virtue which inclines one to spend money for noble purposes. For noble purposes. Not shopping for our own beautiful clothing, things like that. It is to give money for the building of churches, for the help and the relief of the poor, and things like that. Um, and you saw how, how much the people in the Middle Ages did that. All of their money went to building cathedrals. That is why in France and Italy, you see all of these historic, beautiful churches. If you've ever seen pictures of, of France or Rome, the, the cathedrals and basilicas there, they're the most beautiful part of the city. Here, the most beautiful part of the city is our bank. Think of that a little bit. It's where all of our money goes. But in France in the Middle Ages, all the money went to building churches. That is where the beauty was, and that is where everyone's money went. Now, I'm not saying that every cent should go to the church, but be generous. Give to the seminary. The seminary, of course, is, uh, has to support many of the seminarians. The seminarians themselves cannot support themselves. They can't even pay the tuition in many cases. So all of the cost goes on the seminary. That is why we should be generous donate to, to Bishop Sanborn's seminary in Florida and help him out a little bit. It is for a very noble cause for vocations. The third virtue of fortitude is patience. Patience moderates all sadness in face of trials. And fourthly, constancy. We must have constancy in this life to constantly fight against our temptations and our passions and to endure our sufferings. We need constancy, which strengthens us to keep going forward. The analogy I always like to use and that I heard in the seminary was constancy makes us like a bulldozer. A, bulldo a bulldozer pushing a huge pile of dirt. It goes slow, it moves slowly, but it constantly moves forward until it gets through the obstacle. And that is what fortitude does for us. No matter how slowly or painful, painfully we must go forward, we nonetheless never go back. We keep pushing through every obstacle, every temptation. Lastly, the means of attaining fortitude. There are five, and I'll go through them very quickly. The first is fervent love of God. Remember, love makes all things easy. And you obtain this love of God... None, by no other means than by prayer. Ask for it. Every day, the most important prayer that you will ever say is, My God, I love Thee. And then add, add to that, Make me to love You every day more and more. That is the most important prayer you'll ever say. Because in that prayer is contained every other virtue, every other good thing. Secondly, the means of attaining fortitude is to foresee the events which might cause you trouble. That is, by a short meditation in the morning. Think of all the things that will come up in the day that might get on your nerves. Perhaps you have to work with somebody you don't like. Meditate on what you'll do to show charity to him. Or if there's any other temptation that frequently troubles you, meditate on it. Foresee that it will come, it will take place, and pray for the grace to endure it when it does come. Thirdly, meditate on the eternal rewards that will come if we endure temptation constantly. Fourthly, we should contemplate the examples of the saints. And this we can do especially in spiritual reading. And fifthly, practice fortitude in small things. 
Remember, the small penances here prepare us for greater sacrifices to come. And who knows? If you look around in the world today, you see how everything is going badly. Everything is ultimately leading up to the approach of Antichrist. We have to know that. It is a prophecy from sacred scripture. And most of the signs, if not all of the signs, are in place. We're simply waiting for the coming, the apparition of Antichrist. And who knows, but that each one of us here in these pews will not be asked to give up his life for the profession of the faith during those times. And the way to prepare for those sacrifices is by doing the little everyday sacrifices that, that are put in our way. If we can't do these small things, we'll never be able to accept the great sacrifices that may be required for us in the future. So to conclude, many of us will recognize in ourselves that we are very strong when it comes to political matters or defending our family or our rights, but we still remain weak when it comes to professing the faith or practicing virtue and living holily and devoutly. So today we are reminded of two courageous saints, St. Ambrose and St. John the Baptist. Use them as models of fortitude. Meditate on them. All that they did to practice fortitude. And then remember, finally, the phrase, do what I must, come what may. That is true fortitude. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.